why I was interested in trying another one of these races I think is mostly because I didn't finish the Atlas Mountain Race and so I was really motivated to like, okay, I'm excited about this format of racing, I'm in shape right now and I've had a similar experience in not finishing ultras as well in running races uh, where I feel like instantly I'm motivated to find the next race and like I just need to finish something. Uh, Big Lonely, yeah, it was kind of Jesse put it on my radar uh, last year when he was working on it. And then I I missed the deadline for signups, but I was talking to him about um, the bed that we scored from him. <laughs> um, and he's like, hey, I got some spots if you want to come do this race next weekend. And I was like, well, why not? You gotta get this. <laughs> Look at that. I also found that uh, my son stashed a toy car in here last night. <laughs> <laughs> so no I gotta take pictures of it in like weird places. That's what yeah, you gotta do. I had to dig it out. It's all the way down at the bottom. I saw it at Sister's Coffee. I'm like, what? <laughs> oh man. I bet I'll probably find some other stuff in here if I start looking through everything. But so how's the route so far? You enjoying um, yourself? Man, you know what I just remembered? Like, why I built this bike in the first place? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because it's like amazing. I love that Jeep stuff, that four wheel drive road, like the chunky stuff. Oh my God, that's so fun. on that really sandy stretch, oh, but I landed in sand, so I felt pretty good. Yeah, just bounce up. And it was like non-drive side, so it works out there. Oh, how's the bike feel? Feels good. Confident with tire choice? Tire choice, I wish I could have gone a little bit wider. Yeah. But I feel like once I get to some of these road sections up here, I'm going to feel pretty good with my choices. You're almost to the road sections. I figure I'll get to Madras, like have a meal, like see how I'm feeling. Yeah. Don't, I don't really want to stop that early. Right. 
That would be that's really fair. early. Yeah. And that means a lot more like, like if you start early tomorrow morning, that means more time in the wet and dry. <laughs> right. sure. Which, I know. I'm like, I should just keep riding while yeah, it's dry. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Find a coffee shop when it starts raining. Yeah. <laughs> Take a break then. <laughs> it's like, will they hit pot lid first? Uh, yeah, pot lid will be right there. Right 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 okay. Sweet. So 20 miles, give or take. I'm gonna try and get there. Uh, I'm gonna try and get up into the Ochicos and like follow the route in reverse. <laughs> All right. We'll see you tomorrow. Enjoy. Great. See you guys. Yeah. Nice work. Woo! Is that Eric? Oh. <laughs> nice, man. <laughs> zoom, zoom. One of the things that we ran into is that the uh, some of the roads turned into just really thick, bad mud, and riders were unable to even ride through those sections. And knowing that if something went wrong, uh, a vehicle wouldn't even be able to get to uh, that rider in an emergency situation. Um, so it's really challenging to, to know that like, I put this thing together, I brought all these people here, and if something goes wrong, I might be the only connection they have, I might be the only person that's able to coordinate some kind of rescue for them. Uh, so it's a, it ended up being a lot more pressure than I was expecting, and I was a lot more concerned than I thought I would be, uh, simply because the, the conditions got so bad so quickly. Yeah, so on the first day, it went pretty smoothly. I was expecting there to be some weather, like generally through the weekend. Um, so I, you know, packed rain gear, and truthfully, I, it didn't. I wasn't thinking it was going to be a big deal coming from Western Washington and seeing a forecast of like, you know, half an inch, three quarters of an inch of rain. And it's like that's not a big deal. <laughs> I ride in the rain all the time. I'll bring my rain jacket and pants, and didn't think about mud or <laughs> how it might affect the dirt. <laughs> Pretty much right from the start on day two of riding, it was cold and wet and just enough water had fallen that the road had turned to mud. Probably like five minutes into the ride, it started. It was so deceiving because the road looked fine. It looked like kind of a mix of gravel and dirt. And then you would start riding and it just, it caked to everything. So, you know, pretty soon I couldn't pedal anymore so I was off my bike to push it and then it would just completely coat all the tires, my shoes, everything instantly and <laughs> I don't think I lasted very long on the first day because it was uh, <laughs> just a process of you know pushing for a few hundred feet like finding a stick and like poking the mud off, poking it off my shoes going a little bit farther, doing the same thing over and over again. Okay, sweet. Um, well, I'm glad you're okay and like oh, staying positive. Who drove, who drove in a truck so that it's not passing the water vehicle uh, and turned around. Oh, 
It's not passable in a vehicle, but you can walk up it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, just everything's walkable. Yeah. <laughs> that's what that's what Kristen said. She was like, uh, I I don't mind walking. I just want to know if I'm ever gonna stop walking. <laughs> it was just full clay. I was like picking up my bike just to move it. Um, and I guess at some point during that, I got a flat, and I couldn't even see my tire. So I don't even know where the flat puncture was. Like there's nothing I could patch or to like I couldn't even get like a plug in anywhere because I didn't even know where the sealant was coming from. Um, there's a mud section, um, which I've ridden before and really wanted to get beyond the first day, but uh, I was way behind schedule and decided to camp in Ashwood. I got about halfway through the mud section and was rolling along okay. And then it started to downpour, which changed things uh, significantly in the course of about two or three minutes to where it was just huge handfuls, gobs of fistfuls of mud on everything. And there was no way to clean it off. Somehow the mud tore my derailleur off and attached it to the spokes. So I decided to uh, rescue myself by walking. So I was gonna walk back to Ashwood about 10 miles and um, I just took what I needed with me with my, and put it in, a, in one of my bags. And then um, I got a few hundred yards away from my bike, which is difficult to leave your bike when you do this kind of events. Everything you need for survivals on your bike and you have to abandon your abandoned ship so to speak um, some guy in a giant monster truck came up the road and uh, he gave me a ride uh, back to Prineville but that was almost scarier than being stuck uh, in the mud the road was really gnarly and I thought for sure we were gonna go off the road in this truck so I I got into the truck and I'm like whoo I'm safe and the guy takes off and he's just he's just I mean it's a huge truck it's got like an eight inch lift he's just like don't worry about this I uh, I've been doing this since I was a kid and the trucks going all over the place this roads really narrow and there's like a cliff probably 50 yard drop and uh, it's, I don't know how some mud that's that sticky could be that slick. Um, but anyway, I thought, wow, we're gonna die for sure. I'm gonna, now I'm gonna die in a car accident. Um, so I just put my bike helmet back on. <laughs> I felt a little better. Yeah, Nate. Awesome work. <laughs> sleep at all? No. No. no I, I just figured that Evan was right behind me the whole time and I don't know where he is, but yeah. I figured he was. Oh man. That was... Did you stop and get a Coke? Yes. No exaggeration. Three bags of little, a small bag of gummy worms. Oh. Yeah, I could not keep food down. The rain started in around four in the morning or so and it was fairly light for a while, but you know, just, you know, got pretty cold by that point, and I was just not in a good state. Um, kind of nutritionally depleted, hadn't really been able to get food in for quite a while, so um, just that climb up was rough, and then once I got to the top, 
Um, the rain picked up dramatically, the wind picked up, so I was getting pretty cold, um, felt pretty exposed, and I just have never felt quite that, I don't know, fatigued and vulnerable. I think it was honestly the nutrition. Um, and uh, it was pretty, pretty, uh, pretty exposed with heavy winds and trees shaking and eventually got had a tree fall about 10 feet from me which spooked me quite a bit um, so that, it was not at the time it was a pretty rough rough moment for me once you're over it it seems seems a lot less dramatic in hindsight but at the at the time it was it was a rough experience more and more it seems like people are moving toward uh, wanting experiential races like a race that you walk away having left nothing on the table and been um, taking care of everything on your own for a few days. Like that draws a certain, a certain charm, uh, creates a certain level of appreciation for yourself, like uh, to, to go through something like that and um, have this vast and complete experience that isn't just, I got on my bike and I rode for a few hours and now I'm gonna go home and go to sleep. Instead, you have to plan everything. You have to, you have to uh, figure out where you're going to get food, where your water is going to come from. Um, you have to fix anything that goes wrong with your bike, and the the experience is just a lot more complete. And I think I've I've seen uh, races like this come up and see more and more people drawn to them. James said that your shoes were just completely covered. <laughs> yeah. like you, I don't know how I like did the math. He said, yeah, it happened at like mile 130. And I was like, man, she's at mile 200. That means like 70 miles of hiking slash not being able to clip in. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> it was rough. It was, uh... So anybody that didn't make it over the Ochikos, um that first night uh, has scratched, except for you and Sam. Oh, uh, man. So... <laughs> Why I like type two adventures is, I mean, for a few different reasons. That's kind of where like the stories come from is, you know, when it's not easy, when you have to kind of suffer through things. I also think it's kind of just almost a requirement for, you know, getting certain places in the backcountry. It's just likely that you're gonna have some suffering along the way. Um, I also really like the idea of figuring out like where my limit is mentally. Of course there's, you know, you have to get to that point where you're miserable and you're questioning why you're doing it. 
to see, you know, what happens next. Um, and there's, I think, a lot of, like, joy that comes on the other side of that. Nice work, man! How you feeling? Woo. Great route. I mean, that mud sucked, but, like, you know, shit happens. And, yeah. uh, I don't know if that's ever not muddy. It kind of uh, seems like the kind of road that's going to be real shitty either way. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, not that that shitty. Right. <laughs> Your bike looks good. Did you stop and wash it off? No. <laughs> no, I didn't. It was just on your shoulders the whole time. No, I pushed it through there <laughs> mostly. I did a lot of a lot of a lot of like this kind of shit. Um, how was the night? Uh, the night was fine. Um, it just, I don't know, it was very like washboardy gravel that you're like pedaling through and really heavy weight. The final climb up to the um, the butte, uh, the entrance to that, like you kind of had to go out farther than I was expecting. I'm like, when is this thing gonna end? <laughs> like, come on! <laughs> Getting up to the top right at sunset, basically, and you're you're looking out at everything that you just went through. My parents were there, and my brother, and my husband, and like a few random strangers and like other racers were there and there was just like people were like yelling and excited and it felt so good to like be done and like to have done it and uh, I was thinking about that a lot along the course of you know my parents are in this like nice Airbnb and bend and they're making good food and drinking wine and having great conversation and I'm just out here in the middle of nowhere and it's cold <laughs> sleeping in a bivy on the side of the road. Now it's time to just get home and put my feet up and cuddle with my kid. Might have a beer, might have an afternoon beer. I feel like I've earned it. Thanks everybody. This has been a super cool experience. Hard and fun. And with that, the big lonely is over. Um, for anyone who's, who's newer to it or considering doing a race like this, uh, I totally understand how intimidating it is um, because of the distances and because there's just so much more like logistics than like a single day or a single push kind of a race. Um, 
but I think one of the things that I've just been consistently blown away by is the community around it because it's like a pretty small sport and and uh, they're so amazingly supportive and everyone's just wonderful and friendly and I mean that alone I feel like is such uh, so motivating to do a race like this um, because it just makes it way less scary when you have people around that you know are going to be friendly and supportive and um, make it more fun than it would be if you're just out there by yourself.